Hello everyone, thanks so much for joining us today. We're going to give everyone a few more minutes to log in and get settled and we'll begin the webinar in about two minutes. Hello again, everyone. Welcome today to today's webinar, Insights, the Missing Pieces in Your Marketing Data. A few logistical notes before we get started. You'll see two different ways to communicate with us throughout the webinar, the chat box and the Q&A box. Please use the chat box for all technical issues and the Q&A box for any questions related to the content of the webinar. With that, I'd like to introduce Zoe Dowling, our SVP of Research here at Focus Vision. Zoe is an eclectic blend of researcher, technologist, sociologist, and marketer, and uses her extensive research expertise to help clients best supply Focus Vision's technological solutions. At this time, Zoe is going to turn off her camera and jump right into the presentation. Take it away, Zoe. Thanks very much, uh, Rachel, and thank you. Good morning, good afternoon, uh, good early evening to, to those of you joining. Thank you very much for spending this next 30 or 40 minutes with us. I uh, really appreciate it and I hope you're going to find it informative. So we're going to be talking about insights, the missing piece in your marketing data. Now, I don't think that this is going to be a shocking surprise to anybody on the line there. Today's world is all about the experience economy. And it's not just about the product or service that you're selling, but the full experience that your customers, prospective customers have with your brand. And this applies as much to, to B2B brands, as much as B2C in our personal lives, in our professional lives, it doesn't matter. We are in the experience economy and expectations are high. Now, as I said, this, I really don't think this is much of a surprise to you. After all, we've been talking about the experience economy for more than two decades. Now, what have I said? You know, let's think about your brand story. You know, the, the experience that you deliver to your customer, it all starts with your, your brand story and, and what you're promising them, you know, the, the facts about your brand, but also the emotions. But what do they want to feel? Uh, what do you want them to feel when they're interacting with your brands? Now, interestingly, with your brand story, and again, perhaps not surprisingly, it, it needs to be told consistently across the organization. So the customers provided with uh, that consistent experience across the brand. Um, so if, if, I, if I explain here, you know, as, as, as marketers, uh, we may spend and we do spend a lot of time and effort in terms of creating that brand story to really uh, pinpoint on, on how, you know, how, how are we talking about our brand? What, what are we delivering to our customers? But if the people who are on the front lines, those ones interacting with your, your customers and prospective customers day in and day out, um, may be in a retail environment, the technicians, the salespeople, whoever they are, if they're not communicating that brand story in the same way that it's being developed and intended to be told, well, uh, there, there's a challenge there, there's a problem. What if I said that it's not just sort of a, a marketing problem in terms of how your brand's been communicated, but what if I said there's cost involved? Cost for inconsistency when that message isn't told in the same way, when that message is diluted as it goes across the organization. And on the flip side, what if I said there's, there's gains for consistency? 
So this actually uh, is the foundation of a, a fairly uh, fresh uh, research study that ourselves at Focus Vision and uh, we partnered with the interview group who's a, a marketing consultancy. We did a really interesting piece of research exactly on this, on, on brand story uh, consistency or, or on the flip side, uh, brand message dilution as it goes through the organization because it was this kind of question around what happens if the story isn't being told uh, across the organization in the same way um, and, and what's the impact of that? And of course, even before we start, is, you know, how are people feeling? Are people feeling they are able to get that brand story, that brand message communicated across the organization? Uh, so what did we find? Well, actually we found, um, and as you saw on the previous slide, we, we spoke to, to senior professionals like yourselves, marketing uh, directors and, and executives, product, as well as customer experience. And we asked them, you know, it's like, well, what do you think if you were to guess uh, what then your cost of your, of your company, uh, to your company as a result of, of distorted brand dilution? And I would say, surprisingly, it's just, it's just the, the dollar amount that people came up with. Uh, more than half said $6 million or more. And 28% said more than $10 million. So consistency costs millions. And I actually forgot to say a really big number here. We actually found that around 60% of the people completing our survey, our participants, felt that their brand story was being diluted across, as it went across the organization. So there is a challenge there. There is uh, a disconnect. And as you can see on this slide, it's estimated to cost millions of dollars. And when we, I say, well, what do we think the impact of this is, is on the customer, on the customer experience? And, and maybe not surprisingly, but it is this thing around causing customer confusion, leading to unmet expectations, leading them to consider competitors. So there is, there is something going on there. So um, the, the dollar value that really is sort of thought to be associated with it, and of course, the impact on customers. Now on the flip side, for those people who, who felt that, yeah, no, we're, we're actually doing a pretty good job on, on having a consistent brand story going across our organization. What was really interesting was, was that, well, what do you estimate that the, the sales benefit to your company is? And more than 60 or 62% of those people who feel that they have consistency across the organization, they felt that it was $10 million or more. So that's nearly two thirds of those saying, hey, this is really worth a lot of money to us. Now, I will say that one regret that we have with the survey is that uh, we didn't put in higher, higher buckets in place. So we capped it at you know, $10 million more. Well, is that number 15 million, 20 million, 30 million, 40 million, 50 million? Who knows? Um, it is, it is uh, definitely even though in the tens of millions of dollars. And with it, there, there's opportunity of having that consistent message. Now, you might be thinking, well, okay, this is all very well and good, but, but what does this mean? And, and um, what are the differences between those companies who had consistencies and those that didn't? Um, oh, and I should say here, and, and not surprisingly, is that there is um, it, this consistency as a positive effect in the company. You know, look at that, 86% yeah, believing it improves customer engagement, lead generation customer satisfaction, retention, and increase in sales. So the difference between those companies where, who, who feel that they're, they're able to consistently say that brand, their brand story across their organization is those that understand their customer truth. And by that I mean those that understand how your customers think, feel, and act. Really understanding what makes your customer tick, what's important to them, what's not, and everything in between. So in an instance, doing customer research, do getting your customer insights. Now, of course, uh, there are other things and you can, and you can read in this, the report yourself. Um, there, in terms of disseminating that message, experience tactics also play a role. But it starts with insights, customer, customer research. What we found is those with brand alignment, uh, they, they used a more, a more variety of, of research approaches. Now, it was quite comforting to see 95%, so almost everybody, talked about some sort of research program within their organization. But those companies with a alignment on their brand message use a wider variety of, of approaches beyond surveys and focus groups. They did more in-depth interviews. They did more uh, online research communities. So really taking advantage of all the different ways that you can speak to your customer. Now, keenly, and I think quite keenly here, is that those with brand alignments 
actually used the insights that they got. They leveraged it to inform brand and product messaging uh, almost every time or a lot. And you can see quite a big difference. So that's 73% saying, yeah, we're, we're using, we're leveraging this, in, this research, this, the insights that we're gaining, versus those only 45% of them uh, that, that don't um, have strong confidence that their message is being taken across the organization. So I think that's pretty big, uh, and it's certainly a, a, a big uh, indicator of, of the value and importance that insights plays within an organization. Now, I would, I'm going to wager that, that many of you are listening in to this, and maybe don't need convincing, but just in case, just in case, um, I have another uh, snippet of, of research to, to present to you, and I'm actually incredibly excited about this because it's just been released uh, fresh off the press today, literally. Uh, Focus Vision commissioned a, a study by Forrester Consulting Group because uh, we really wanted to dig into to, you know, what are the, the motivations, what, what's happening with consumers, how much does how they think and feel impact what's, um, their, their decisions and what they're doing. We also wanted to speak to the business side to understand, you know, are, are these matching? Uh, what did we find out? So one of the, the most, and, and this is just a snippet from, from the research, and I absolutely urge you to go take a look at the study. Um, it's available on our website. Uh, I think this is, this, is, this is big. Whether it's a surprise or not, I think is, is open to, to debate. But what they found was that the way customers think and feel drives business outcomes. Okay, so how they think is, you know, uh, you can see in here provides great recommendations, fits my lifestyle, friendly employees, and so on. So that kind of think aspect. Um, and then the feel is, is much more the emotional elements, um, discuss the light, and so on. So both of these variables really are statistically significant drivers of business outcomes. Those things that we want, purchase, loyalty, advocacy, because that's at the end of the day, that's what we want. To think and feel drives act. What's fascinating though, and you've just seen this little bubble here uh, on the left hand side, is that feel is one and a half times more impact than think in driving these business outcomes. So emotions really matter. Now, interestingly, hey, and when we went to the business side, and again, this was senior executives, marketing, CMOs, um, VPs, um, and also customer experience uh, people, um, and they, they were, you know, almost unanimous in saying, yeah, uh, you know, customers, people are more likely to spend money on the brand they feel connected to. Um, and 91% said, yeah, you know, customers want convenient and highly personalized experiences when interacting with a brand. So that message is out there. And again, that's why I said, you know, maybe that's not so much the emotional aspect of it is maybe not so much of a surprise to you. What we found though, is that when we actually dug into, you know, well, what's going on? Um, so, so the business people are saying, yes, you know, you need to have an emotional connection with that brand. Yet only 58% of them strongly agree that they understand how their customers think and feel. Even more worryingly, and I think even more, you know, here's the flag going up is, 38% of companies strongly agree they know why one customer chooses to buy from their brand, why another doesn't. So just think about that. 38% of companies are uh, no, so that leaves your, your other 62% not knowing why one customer chooses to buy from them, whilst another doesn't. So they're missing that, you know, they, they're, um, what's going on and driving the act. When we took a, a, a look into this even further, we had to look, well, if you're, you're not really understanding how your customers think and feel, well, how are you, what kind of data are you looking at? And, and here, I think, is, is some of the, um, maybe one of the roots of the problem, and maybe a, a, a big one, is that there's an awful lot of reliance, if you look at these first um, three pieces here, of reliance on big data, which is fantastic, but nevertheless, it's, it's customer data, your, your CRM, your direct response, your behavioral user experience. And that's all about what customers are doing, what they're doing. But you're not able to get from there why they're doing it, how they're thinking and feeling. So that's just a, a bit of a snippet from, from that, that really interesting study um, that the Focus Vision Commission from Forrester. Uh, the results are available. Um, we're also, our, our next webinar coming up in a few weeks' time is actually going to uh, feature um, uh, a guest speaker from 
from Forrester Consulting to talk through the results more. So I would, I would uh, urge you to consider uh, attending that. Um, but, but really fascinating study and really highlights again the importance of the small data, the importance of understanding your customers. Okay, so if you needed convincing, hoping, hopefully you are convinced. If you didn't need convincing, then you know, hopefully it just gives you a good sense of, yeah, we're doing the right thing, hopefully. Um, so what are the different ways to know your customers? Very, very briefly, I uh, already talked about this, this big data, that that's what people are generally relying on. Um, and it's because it's great, it's right there. This is actually a snippet from our own Focus Vision uh, Google Analytics dashboard. And it's fascinating and we use it and it's incredibly important because we want to be looking at traffic and what's coming in, who's looking at what and where and when, because ultimately uh, we want to be delivering uh, the content that you need at that right time. So this is fantastic data. However, it only tells a part of the story. Um, to, to give a really brief uh, example of, of the small data gathered through asking questions and directly observing your customers through the surveys and the qualitative approaches that small data provides rich understandings of how they think and feel. If I bring this to life with uh, a case study that, that, um, that Avon conducted, they wanted to understand the role of cosmetics in Latina's wives. And so they undertook a multi-stage phase study kicking off with a large scale, scale survey of 3,000 women in four South American countries. And fascinating results from the survey, you know, just such as a snippet from the one over here, uh, just on the screen, they found that there is, there's five sizes of makeup bags, uh, ranging from extra large, nearly 100, you know, averaging 100 items, which is, which is pretty large in, in my book, uh, all the way down to extra small of, of just around 12 items. So there's, you know, sort of a fascinating um, sort of range going on there. Now that's, that's fascinating in of itself. What they did as a follow-up, though, they conducted an online a research community and they used Revelation for this, and they actually had a woman take pictures of their makeup bags, and you can see some examples here, and so you can get a flavor of what it looks like and actually see what products are in there. They also did um, some video data, because you know, video data is incredibly rich, and what they, they did was they actually asked women to record themselves uh, as they're applying their makeup, as they're doing their beauty uh, routine in the morning. It's a very rich, very personal data that they get there that was able to tell um, and, and really explain uh, and give more richness and depth to, the, to the, the information that was gathered in the survey. Now, this study was commissioned by the marketing team to feed into messaging, uh, but it was so valuable it was actually used across the organization in a variety of ways, including products. So in the, uh, where I've been leading up to is um, we've heard a lot about da big data in recent years and, and it really kind of being the, the be all and end all. And I think it actually is fantastic. And, and as I said, we uh, use it here ourselves at Focus Vision. And it helps us understand human actions and behaviors. It helps us understand what people are doing. Whereas small data helps us understand the attitudes, the emotions, how people are thinking and feeling, uh, uh, what they're doing. And really it comes down to using both of them. To really understand your customer, you need to use big data and small data together. In the words of, uh, in the, words of the renowned brand strategist Martin Lindstrom, um, you may have read some of his books, he's written Biology, Brand Sense, and the one here from, from this quote, small data, the best and closest approximation of who we are as humans comes from mixing our online and offline self and from combining big data with small data. And so again, a, a quick um, piece on, on, on why insights matter um, and how it fits within the organization. Uh, this, for me, this, this first one, I think is one of the, the most important ones. And it's one that I, you know, as I speak to clients, as I speak to, to, to people like yourselves, and, and you know, something that comes up time and time again, and, and oftentimes within marketing departments, it is, is this idea of this, uh, call it the case study of one. You know, oh, I was in talking with my client last week and they would never use that feature. We're thinking about their product discussion. Or, yeah, no, that I don't understand that messaging. Nobody else would. Or I like that image. And, um, yeah, I think that's going to resonate. So it's, it's very much that here, um, the case study one, the personal opinions. Let's bring in the evidence from the people that we're, we're trying to speak to. We're, we're trying to make sure that things are, 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 are resonating with. Uh, the next thing is, is strategic use of time and budget. We hear a lot, uh, which is an understatement, about better, faster, cheaper. 
we hear a lot about resources, about um, not having the time, time resource, not having the financial resource to conduct research. And in the end, actually taking that time, and I'm not proposing it in any shape or form that it's something lengthy, lengthy drawn out and hyper expensive, but taking the time to conduct some research, taking the time to speak to your customers, um, ultimately is a more strategic use of time and budget. You know, a marketer I talked to recently said she'd um, been throwing everything against the wall to see what sticks. And uh, because her team didn't have research to help guide, guide development. Um, so she would go with her gut and hope for the best. And, you know, that's kind of like, we, we know this happens, but it, it, it does resonate when you actually hear it firsthand that this, this does goes on. And so research gives us the guidance to work smartly, saving time and budget and taking the guesswork, you know, out of, uh, does, does, this, does this work? Um, and we've got some examples here of focus vision. When we've gone back to our research, because we're thinking, hmm, are we sure this is, this is working? Um, so I'll talk about that more in a minute. But it definitely um, does pay off, I think, at the end of the day to take a short amount of time to go and speak to, to people. Measure performance. We all want to measure performance. Um, how are we doing? Are we moving the needle? Because at the end of the day, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to move that needle. And, and insights is a great way, one of the ways that we can do this. <sighs> Aligning the organization. Again, this is something that is a real pain point. Uh, I think within uh, the majority, if not all organizations, you know, we, we have in the past, in, in years and decades gone past, very much uh, operated in silos. You know, IT's done their thing, marketing's done their thing, products done their thing, and it's okay. We're we're all moving along, and it just doesn't work like that anymore. If I if I go back to this whole idea of the the experience economy, you know, this is how we how how our customers, prospective customers, interact with us on on um it, it, with every single touch point from our websites from are phoning up the, the customer support uh, desk from the retail salesperson, um, customer service uh, person, whatever we're, we're calling them or whatever it makes sense in your organization, the technicians going into homes and all these different things. All of these people need to be aligned because we're all moving towards the same, the same objective. Um, and this, this goes back to the, 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 the joint study we conducted with Interview on the, the brand message dilution. You know, customer insights really does play a role in bringing the organization together. And of course, we can conduct research on our employees as well to make sure that we are listening and hearing and, and making sure that everybody's aligned. So it's an incredibly important piece in terms of aligning the organization. And then at the end of the day, um, and just, just echoing back to some of those results from, from that Forrester study I was talking about early, earlier that we, we, we've commissioned, is that increases loyalty at and revenue because at the end of the day we want to be driving business outcomes that is what we're here to do so understanding how your customers think and feel um, helps you understand how they act and so very compelling story for why insights matter and why it is important um, to 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 incorporate it in some shape and form into your your daily um, your your daily operations if you like and just how you're, you're working so there's a lot we can learn about our customers, even if we just start with asking the question, why? Why does my customer buy from us? Why do they visit those web pages over others? Why does that blog category work better than others? We can understand what they do, sorry, why they do what they do, how they go about different aspects of their daily lives, their jobs, their personal routines, their family routines, whatever is appropriate um, to what you're, you're seeking to understand. Um, and in the context of your business, the challenges that they have, their attitudes, the language that they use. Language is incredibly important, particularly thinking about messaging and also the reactions to your messaging and so much more. So we can really learn a lot just by, by asking and, and asking why. However, just saying to you, well, ask questions of your customers. I think that's a little vague uh, and feels incredibly overwhelming. Um, so, so where do we start? And, and thinking that this way, customer research can help build your marketing foundation, can help inspire your work. So let's look deeper at this. Now, 
first and foremost, I say at the end of the day, we're an experienced economy. It's all about your customers. It's all about the people that you're trying to reach and connect. However, for the sake of visualizing it, I did want to start with your brand story. You know, really, it, it is about who your brand is and, and what that story is and, and how you differentiate from your competitors and, and what feelings are you uh, hoping to elicit and, and deliver, I should say, to your customers. And so this is a great place of thinking about how, how talking to people. Where do you stand? How do your customers really feel about your company and brand today? How do you want to move that? How do you develop this brand story um, to make sure that it stands apart while staying true to yourself? And so asking questions and talking to people is, is really important when you're thinking about your brand story. Quite closely linked to this is, of course, positioning work, the conceptual place that you want to own in your, your target customer's mind, the benefits you want them to think about when they think about your brand why you are different and better than the competition, uh, why your customers should choose to do business with you, um, shorthanding the most crucial information and cutting through the noise. So again, customer research can help identify what spaces and white spaces there are in your category, where you best fit, what your target audience may be, how people think about your brand, and of course your competitors. Now, just as an example, uh, we at Focus Vision uh, recently experienced with both of these. Um, for those of you that have known us for, for some time, uh, maybe you'll, you'll remember that we undertook um, a full rebrand at the beginning of last year. And in advance of this, we undertook positioning work to really understand our space. And this involved in-depth interviews with customers, prospective customers, industry experts, and we followed it up with a survey to quantify the findings. Um, so we really tried to, to, to reach wide and deep um, in where we were speaking to people and then following up to, you know, can, can, we, can we verify this? Uh, can we quantify it? And that work took us a long way. Uh, but within a few months, we actually realized that our brand story wasn't there. And so we conducted another round of research. Again, in-depth interviews, followed by a survey to hone in on the problems our customers need solved, uh, the benefits we offer, the language that we can use to best express this. And we've actually since done a little more work. So it's, it's very much an iterative approach, process. And that's something I'll talk about in a moment. But I did want to highlight, you know, uh, we, we, are, we are trying to talk Talk the talk, walk the walk, uh, as the saying goes. You know, believe strongly that that speaking to to your customers to understand them uh, is is how you go about building uh, a, a good business, building experiences that meet what you need. Uh, and we firmly believe this, and so that's why why we are taking the time to speak to our customers, to speak to yourself. So moving on, uh, speaking to customers again. Uh, research, you know, if you want to understand more about them, in, and this, this can be really good for persona uh, development, just as an example, but also message uh, messaging. So, you know, thinking about what's the background, current role, needs, expectations, and that's very, very helpful when you're building out personas. Um, in terms of messaging, well, how and where should you speak to them? Uh, trusted publications, what kind of information is sort? What's resonating? Think about this actually in, in the, the context of, of content creation, of course. Uh, a big part of, of today's uh, marketing paradigm is, is sort of always on digital engagement, multi-touch points, and, and delivering value through content. Um, and that, that's something, again, uh, we really believe in. Uh, we're, we're trying to deliver content uh, that, that, is, that is helpful, uh, that resonates, that provides value. Um, and so, again, continually trying to, to, to speak and understand and find out, well, what, what works? What, what didn't work? Uh, what would you like to see more of um, to try and build that out? And so it, it's really helpful to speak to your customers um, to, 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 build, to build this out. And then finally, I think this is the big one. How are you doing? How are your marketing efforts paying off? Have you shifted the needle? What are your competitors up to? And not to be forgotten, and this is definitely not an omission, um, but, but it is, it, it's, it's how, how satisfied are your customers? Because the customer satisfaction, we hear about voice of the customer. Most of the time we're thinking about a, a, a quick pulse survey can, you know, uh, how many of you have been to the grocery store in the last week and uh, the, the, the cashier said, and, you know, circled in the bottom of your lengthy receipt saying, hey, you can complete a short survey for us. You know, this is, this is everywhere and very much we're inundated with this type of pulse surveys. And it's great. And it, it provides us valuable information. 
but it doesn't just stop there. There's all of these other things that we need to do to hear and, and really learn and understand how our customers are thinking and feeling. So, um, and, and yes, of course, with, with that, that understanding how, they're, how, they're, how satisfied they are, making sure that we've got a feedback loop in place and, and to be able to act upon what you hear. Now, again, uh, being very open about what we do at Focus Vision, uh, we, we believe in this as well. We have a monthly NPS survey, a quarterly brand tracker, a customer satisfaction a survey for each product. This is our regular set of research. The brand tracker helps us monitor that we're moving, uh, whether, <laughs> whether we're moving the needle on KPIs, such as awareness. Uh, we also have a few core imagery statements that we're looking to go for a positive trajectory. And this information isn't just reviewed during the monthly or quarterly report out, but it is referred to when questions arise, such as uh, those differing op opinions. You know, I talked about the case study one. And, you know, recently, you know, th there was a number of us in a room uh, from all sorts of different departments. And uh, we left um, from the marketing side thinking, oh, my goodness, you know, are we, are we on the right track? Um, because we heard um, some of these different opinions and, and some case studies of one, and we went back to the data and we were able to say, mm, yeah, you know what? We are moving the needle in the way we want to. So stand firm, stand strong um, and keep moving. And that goes back to that, that slide where I was talking about, you know, why insights matter. And it is about strategic use of, of time and, and financial resources. Um, again, by following the, by following the data, you're able to say, mm, yes, okay, we're on the right path. And you're not just kind of changing things up and around because, oh my goodness, I'm not sure if this is working. So you have that information and that's where monitoring your performance, uh, what it's all about and using that research. Now, of course, you know, I've just kind of gone through all sorts of different types of, of questions that you can answer as you're thinking about, you say, your marketing framework. Um, this isn't all different studies. Sometimes research uh, answers multiple questions. Think of that Avon study, for example, it was, it was done for marketing and they got the answers and, and information and insight that they needed, but it was also incredibly useful for, for many other departments across the organization. The other thing that I've alluded to is, is that it's an iterative process. Just like one piece of advertising isn't going to engage your customers from now till eternity, one piece of research isn't gonna give you all the answers. Uh, I also, also talked about, um, if we talk about time, if we talk about uh, the, the resources, you know, these, the days of the big, chunky, uh, sort of annual, massive study uh, is, is not bygone, but, it, but it's, it's less helpful, you know, that there's less scope for those very lengthy, expensive studies. And so, again, I think this whole idea of, of iterating, of as you answer one question, another may emerge, and building upon your your body of knowledge about your customers to keep refining messaging, to keep delivering more relevant experiences. Um, and of course, the world is changing quickly. So you may need to go back and rethink existing knowledge. So, you know, this is, this is quite important. You know, research doesn't need to be done in those big, chunky, expensive studies. There's a time and a place for them. But understanding your customer truth, that is around understanding how they think and feel, is done by asking and keep asking continually through short surveys, online in-depth interviews, maybe online community research, whatever, whatever needs to be done um, to answer that, that question at hand. And it can be done in a very, I would say, agile, nimble way. And I think that that's key. And, and that's part of how things are moving and transforming uh, within, within research, uh, within customer insights today. There is this kind of new paradigm going on. Now, I have been asked, you know, if we're just starting out, where to start? Um, again, just like simply asking questions, but say, hey, you can all or not by asking questions. Well, that feels a little nebulous and overwhelming. But if you don't have a research program in place, wh where would you start? Now, again, it's going to be very dependent upon what kind of business you're in, what phase you're in, are you a startup? It's going to be very different from your startup, from something, you know, as, you, as you've grown and matured somewhat. Uh, but just, just, as a, just as a thought um, and as a general, a starting point um, and thought starter, Starting off with, with internal interviews, you know, get that conversation going. This is the easiest bit. Where are people coming from? Do you know, we talked about all these different departments within an organization and everybody's thinking about the customers. Everybody wants to do the best for the customers. Everybody's doing it from their lens, from the seat that they're sitting in. So the people in marketing are thinking one way, people in sales are thinking about it another way, people in product in another way, 
uh, operations and so on. And so really by speaking to, to different uh, internal stakeholders, people within the organization, understand their lens, understand also what they're hearing from customers, and then bringing it all together. And once done that, the next thing is to well, we'll talk to your customers and get that external sense check on, you know, what's, what are we hearing that's consistent that we're hearing from the customers? Is there something that's more of an outlier um, that might be more of that case study one, personal opinion coming in? There may well be really good reasons for those and, and it could be good to go back and explore it. But again, making sure that it's going back to the customer because those are the people that you're trying to answer the questions for. Those are the people that we want to do a better for and to deliver these great experiences. And this could be uh, a quick survey. It could be focus groups, uh, online interviews, um, or online focus groups. You know, it could, it could be a variety of things and doesn't need to be uh, it doesn't need to be massive. It could be sort of a, a go in and have a 20, 30 minute conversation, um, but it'd be very, very helpful. From there, and again, this depends where you're on the journey, but maybe you're looking at developing your KPIs. Well, what, are we, what do we want to be measured on? Where do we start? Um, and again, this kind of forms to, you know, you might want to start thinking about a brand, track, uh, a brand tracker, you know, to be able to monitor your performance over time, uh, to monitor those KPIs over time. So if you don't have those KPIs, uh, you're going to want to, to, to create them um, and then you know, start out and, and, get your, and get your baseline and see how you can move the needle over time. And then from there, well, it's really dependent on what stage you're at. You know, you, and this is, of course, not linear by any shape or form. You might need to go in to, to understand more about your customers and, and build personas and everything and start developing messaging. You might find then you need to go re refresh, revise, uh, tweak your brand story. You know, all of this is, is very much, it's not a linear journey. Um, it's very much a circular, um, but it is a case of, you know, springboard from there, find out what's best for your company um, and carry along. And of course, you know, this takes time. Uh, uh, it, <laughs> they're saying Rome wasn't built in a, uh, in a night. Um, and, and it's the same thing. It's starting out, it's starting to build that foundation of knowledge. Um, and as I've just talked about, to iterate upon it, to keep building upon it, to keep growing and growing. And as I wrap up here, uh, I just wanted to leave you with a final thought. So to, to summarize, you know, we really heard that the customer insights is a foundational element within the companies who have, uh, when we're thinking about brand story alignment across the organization. So keeping that message consistent, consistent, um, and that there's great opportunity cost for that in terms of revenue. We've also heard that there is the importance of customers having an emotional connection uh, with your brand. Um, and that was what we heard from the, the Forrester study that, that, that Focus Vision commissioned. Um, and, and that kind of um, surprising and, and a little bit dismay of, of that figure where 38% of businesses, um, only 38% of businesses strongly agree they understand why customer chooses them and why others choose a competitor. So we can see that understanding how your customers think, feel, and act provides that edge. In today's fast-moving world, we all need that edge. So with your final thought is, you know, we started out saying insights is the missing piece in your marketing data. Well, I'll also say that the missing role in your marketing team is this transformational, transformational researcher. Um, I talked about research is, is transforming because of this new paradigm, the better, faster, cheaper, but also we have new tools and technologies and, and that's what makes me so excited to, to be part of Focus Vision because I do believe in the, the tools and technologies that we offer um, to make us more nimble, to make us be able to take a, a sort of an agile approach, an iterative approach to asking questions and to get that information uh, just in time um, so that you can make informed, you know, we all want to make data-driven business decisions. That's also part of today's paradigm. And, and small data, I think, is an incredibly uh, valuable part of that. So with that, I'm going to uh, wrap up. Thanks, Zoe. At this time, we are going to open the floor for Q&A. Please use the Q&A box to type in your questions. We'll give everybody a few minutes to do so. Some great questions have come in. Zoe, would you like to get started? Sure. Um, so let me take a, a practical one first. 
Um, I mentioned, the um, question here is you mentioned the studies are available, where can we find them? So I mentioned two studies, um, and I definitely think both are, are really interesting in, in their own rights. One from thinking about the, the internal organizational aspect of your brand story. Um, that was a study that we jointly did with Interview Group, and it's available in our resource library. Uh, the other study, uh, freshly released today, it's very, very exciting. Um, it was a, a Forrester study that we commissioned, um, that we at Focus Vision commissioned from them. And it's really having a look into to how your customers are thinking and feeling and what they're doing. And I presented some of the data. Um, there's also some fascinating information around what businesses are doing. Um, so I encourage you to take a look at that. And that's also available on our resource library. So let me see. Um, another question here. So it's, um, I'm an earlier startup uh, and don't have a research program in place. Where, where do I start? Well, I'm actually going to say I think you're 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 a, in the right place. You know, thinking about customer research uh, is an early on, um, and oftentimes it's amazing with with organisations um, that it, the um, even extremely large ones uh, may not have uh, much of a research uh, presence. Uh, maybe do some external study. So if you're if you're a startup and you're thinking about customer research at this stage, I think that's fantastic, and it's going to see you along the right journey. Um, where to start, it really depends where you are and what size you are and what category and what area you're in. Um, it may be that you are just trying to find your like, you know, position. Where am I in this journey? You know, what is this white, this white space available for me to meet the needs, my, my product or service or whatever I'm, you're offering? Um, where, where does that meet the need? And so how can I build messaging that's really going to capitalize upon that white space? How am I going to build a brand story? And make sure that I'm explaining, um, you know, who, who we are and, and what we deliver. You know, what kind of the, the emotions that you want people to feel with with your brand. So I think um, I think that that may be where you want to start. Uh, but of course, it really depends where you are on the journey, uh, what, what kind of size you are. Um, feel free to reach out. I, I'd love to have a conversation with you. So we have another question here. Um, I'm seeing the market research department and. And traditional primary and secondary research is getting mar marginalized as data collection and data monitoring function gets distributed and decentralized. How can we stay in the game? What are the key skill skills we should build and key benefits we should be adding? So I'm just going to make sure I understand that. So it's about market research. And, and yes, and I think this speaks to, to other departments conducting their own research, um, maybe going and doing a quick survey themselves um, so that there's less uh, people coming into to the research, the marketing research uh, department. Oh, yeah, just here, especially social data gathering. Yeah, that's, that's a good one. So how can we stay in the game? What are the key skills that we should build and key benefits we should be adding? Uh, a great question. And, you know, I think this is one that, that many, many companies are grappling with. Um, and this also, I think, speaks to um, when I've alluded to this idea of the transformational research, because I think that we are changing, and that's the key benefits and the key kind of skills that we've got. Some of it, I'm going to come to what just, and it's not an order, but education for me is one of the big things that, and I've been speaking to a few people. In fact, I, I, I met with somebody last week and we were having this kind of exact conversation. And um, this person was kind of feeling a little bit despondent, shall I say, at exactly this, this challenge. You know, people are collecting their own data and they may not be doing it in the right way. Um, and, and I'm saying, well, okay, so we're, we're not going to, we can't change that paradigm. We, we can't change it. This is the way that it's going. And um, I think that rather than, than seeing that too much as a negative, I'm going to put my positive spin on and say, okay, so we as researchers have an opportunity to educate, to be able to say, you know, and it's not easy, and I'm not professing or claiming this is easy in any shape or form, but try and say, you know, you want to be thinking about your data in X, Y, Z way. Um, and we want to be, if you're asking questions, think about the way that you're asking them because that can really inform the data. So there's an educational element of it. And that, that kind of, so, so uh, one of the, the key skills, I think, um, is what we've got. And all these skills I think researchers traditionally have are, are incredibly valuable um, because they're just going to be utilized in a different way. So a consultative skill, you know, going in and saying, how can I help you? you you're, if you're doing the social get data gathering, um, can I help you build a process around this? Can I help you look at this data and think about, you know, what to watch out um, and uh, when interpreting it? 
And I think that, that that kind of value role so that people come to you and say, hey, can you just give me your opinion on that? Um, because we, we can't, I would say within organizations, from the ones that I've spoken to, and I'm speaking to more and more researchers within enterprises, um, to hear about their challenges, hear what's going on. You know, oftentimes there's, uh, you know, uh, on the small side, team of one, uh, which is fairly common, um, to maybe a team of, of, even if you're five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, um, it's still going to be small compared to the rest, the size of the rest of the organization. And so there's just no way you can do everything. But by being that consultant, that, that trusted advisor, being able to say, hey, I'm going to, you know, I can help educate, I can help provide you the tools to do this in a way that puts some sort of, of um, uh, hopefully good practice around it, then that's one thing. And the other thing is you're hoping then they'll come for the big studies, for the things that are really, really going to, to make a difference um, and, and taking on. Uh, taking on roles there. So I think it's it is a lot of the, the soft skills that researchers already have um, around just, just uh, talking to people internally, uh, trying to help break down those silos, help be an educator, uh, a consultative uh, member of, of their team. And I think the other skills um, is just around, is, is always being up on the new technologies coming, the new ways of getting data, um, and being, being abreast of it and really thinking about you know, how can this be used? What are the, what are the opportunities and what are the, the watch outs? So that was, um, I don't think that fully answered the question, but, but I think that that's, there's a lot of things for us to be thinking about. Um, and I do think that, that some of it's a lot of opportunity. Um, it's, it's daunting as well. And it's daunting for everybody in every organization and every department. So we're, I think we're all in this together. With that, um, we've come to the end of our time, Rachel. I think I have, I've also gone over slightly, so let's wrap up. Thanks, Zoe. Thanks so much for joining us today and for a great presentation as usual. Unfortunately, it looks like we've reached the end of our time together. If there were any questions that didn't get answered today, we'll follow up soon, or you can email us at webinars at focusvision.com, and we will respond to your question at that time. We hope you enjoyed the webinar, Insights, the Missing Piece in Your Marketing Data. We hope to see you at future webinars. Have a great day.